Uh, this uh, this song is titled uh, "What What Is a God?" I've been listening on YouTube to your commentary on guru worship in India, which is a refreshing breeze to what I experienced with Sri Chinmoy. I understood that my experiences of God through visions with him was the self all along, and. I also had many visions on the spot with his consort, Alo Devi. Later, I discovered this lady was super inflated and mentally disturbed. Uh, Ramji, that's me. She learned from the best. He was one of the most disturbed so-called gurus of modern times, a meaty, vain, cunning, predatory master manipulator, a proper poseur, and a real ghoul. Anyone with a lick of common sense could feel needy insufficiency oozing from every pore. I met him once, and my takeaway? Slimy. Unfortunately, a significant fraction of desperate, spiritually inclined people tend to be gullible and are easily fooled by good looks, six-pack abs, smarmy smiles on focus, Face of uh, faces lifted upward toward the heavens. Over the years, I met quite a few people who were duped by him. He was particularly clever insofar as he hid behind a carefully curated image of public service. My friend Paul said, the problem is that many of the followers never understood that. It is the Atman in their own hearts that they are being, that is being projected upon that person on the stage. Moreover, the devotees most of the time don't know the gurus personally. If they did, their power of projection would be neutralized and they would become disillusioned. But many spiritual people are escapists and are in love with the transcendental fantasy. So they become disassociated guru junkies. Anyway, thank you for your commentary and clearing up this issue for me. My pleasure, Paul. I forgot that you were a Sri Chinmay guy at one time. Falling for the Guru Act is really unfortunate as far as freedom and non-dual love is concerned. It is the experiential notion of enlightenment on steroids, a complete tribute to duality's ugly downside, exceptionalism, denial, deceit, conceit, vanity, and so forth. As true non-dual teachers every where say, what isn't God? This is not to say that evil belongs to God, which is pure and perfect in every way. It belongs to Maya, ignorance of God, the benevolent, all pervasive, unseen, but always experienced innermost self. Much love, Ramji. So I have a question. Does this falling for, for let's say, crazy gurus, is this an issue for? Like uh, you, older people, like your generations, or uh, I, don't, um, I don't know many no, of my own generation who fell for it. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's so much of it going on anymore. Sri mm -hmm. Chinmoy was he, he came from a, the Orbindo ashram a long time ago. He came to the states, and um, there were a lot of people at that time who were. Uh, he was a, a messianic guru. He was a, a in other words, he was. Uh, we're going to save the world, and uh, and he was going to bring down the overmind and enlighten people. That's why he had this. I, I looked for the proper picture. He was a handsome man, and and he was a very fit man. He was a, a jock, an athlete, and uh, a lot of people, you know, fall for that. I'm going to save the world, and so uh, please follow me. And then behind that screen, they they uh, carry on with their bossiness, whatever they are. And it's usually very simple. In his case, sex and money. Uh, not so much money, although he had plenty of money. But basically, it was sex and uh, and fame. He just thought he had the world of himself, his body, basically. And, um, and since he was an attractive man, he attracted a lot of people. But Nowadays, I, I don't think that's quite so. There's quite so much of that going on. I, I know, um, in in I, I've been teaching for quite a while, 
and I, I've and I've noticed that there's not so much of the guru worship. Um, yeah, that's an evolutionary progress. Huh? Yeah, I think so. I think the spiritual world is finding people are getting matured, matured a little bit, and you know there are a lot of there's a whole raft of of failed gurus we call them fallen yogis who came to the states and they were so uh, um, they fell so far they were so famous and had so much promise and they fell so far that people are uh, you know starting to get wise up but you know it's as my father used to say once bitten twice shy so i think people are more careful good i think it's a good satsang huh? yeah yeah, it's great. It's important. I mean, it's not to say you shouldn't do your due diligence. Uh, you know, so, so you shouldn't think that you're in the clear all the time. You should poke around and listen to people and see what, you know, I listen to the stories. But on the other hand, you know, you're going to have to resolve the issue somehow. Uh, uh, and if, if in like in our tradition, it's a different story because we don't claim to be the source of all the the wisdom we 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 claim we, we uh teach scripture and scripture is something that doesn't have a personal agenda and uh because it's not a person it and the words of scripture are the words of god in other words they're the words of truth they speak truth so we see and that that's a great check on the on the teachers who teach vedanta uh, as, as far as i know there's only one one Swami in our tradition in the last 50 years that I know of, and maybe others, but I doubt it, uh, a man named Swami Sudanand, who was a very charismatic uh, teacher, uh, but he was very corrupt. And again, the, the, usual, uh, the usual stuff got him basically sex, uh, basically sex in his case. So, and now he's uh, just a shadow of his, Former self, he just uh, nobody's following him. He's just a, a sad, tired old man sitting somewhere in eastern India, and nobody's paying any attention to him. So, okay, yeah, I knew that. 